So the inspiration for doing any sort of vegan dishes stems from our style of cooking and cuisine anyways. We always focus on using seasonal, supporting local farmers, local ingredients, and naturally through the progression of how we work and see food, uh, we've always done quite a bit of um, veg-focused dishes. Especially now, we focus on what the global trends and what the market actually wants and needs are. And very luckily, um, we've been here long enough to work with a lot of um, local organic farmers who are now able to provide us with some really cool ingredients. Um, and in order to show those ingredients off, um, we create particularly just plant-based dishes as well. It definitely is. You're seeing uh, a global shift towards um, trying to eat cleaner, eat healthier, um, get fitter. Um, slowly eat uh, less processed foods, move to more natural, more plant-based um, foods itself. Um, definitely being a, a more veg-focused diet um, definitely helps with digestion, um, it helps with inflammation, it helps with um, general well-being overall. Um, and for most part, for most people, it works, with, it works better for them. My favorite plant-based ingredients will have to be mushrooms, of course. Um, they give you a lot of uh, umami flavors, um, so it gives you, it satisfies that mouth, uh, like satisfaction that you're missing when you're eating only plant-based ingredients. Um, things like seeds, nuts, um, especially things like cashews and stuff. Uh, they're nice, rich, and decadent, and they definitely like fulfill any sort of craving for fat and anything that you need. So the thing is, I mean, it starts off with having like the best ingredients. Um, so always focus on seasonal, um, like there's no point in me um, in the middle of winter trying to use strawberries and avocado and stuff like that. Um, use what's readily available, what's at its peak, um, always go local, um, and then be fun with it, right? Just because it's a plant-based dish doesn't mean it has to be boring, it doesn't have to be flavorless, right? It can, always, it can be just as tasty if not tastier. For us, regardless if it's a plant-based dish, if it's a uh, non-veg dish, if it's a seafood dish, if it's whatever, um, as long as there's a want and need for it, uh, we always try to fill that void and satisfy whoever the customer is. The shift towards a plant-based diet definitely is a lot um, faster growing and bigger um, globally. Um, there's already an extremely high percentage of vegetarians in India. Um, and veganism itself is definitely growing. But probably not as fast, only because, again, it's until very recently, it wasn't as easy to get uh, high quality produce. Um, now you're seeing farmers and stuff like that learn these techniques, learn how to get or do organic uh, practices and whatnot. So the, the quality of vegetables themselves are getting better. Um, so slowly there is a definitely growth there. A customer base that we have. Um, they're very familiar with uh, what I do. Um, they're familiar with my background. Um, most of my customers know that I'm from a deep third generation restaurant background. Um, I studied in school for it. Um, I spent a couple of years learning nutrition. Um, all of that was part of my formal training as well. So any sort of um, nutritional information breakdowns, um, any sort of uh, queries they have regarding a plant-based diet sort of thing, um, I can easily then, like, answer for them. I mean, a, a plant-based diet, um, it doesn't mean that you, you're, you'll have an incomplete diet. Um, you just have to be, you have to know exactly what you're eating and the balance of the breakdown is. And uh, incorporating plant-based foods into our menus across all of our um, brands and restaurants and outlets, um, it's always been a big part of the way I've cooked anyways. Um, we just focused more on giving a more of a variety for special vegan dishes. Um, and we've, 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 we've worked very hard on them and we've managed to create some vegan-based dishes that everyone likes, even non veg itself. Uh, Plant-based food itself is generally fairly inexpensive. Um, again, if you focus on local seasonal vegetables, it's always going to be cheaper than trying to buy anything else. Um, the only times where it can get a little tricky and expensive is if you're trying to use some sort of um, exotic um, replacement 
filler kind of chemical based thing. Um, but if you stick with natural fresh ingredients, it's actually fairly cheap. Okay. For the most part, you can do it at home. It just takes a little bit of research and a little bit of hard work. Um, we, like for example, like our vegan cheeses and milks and whatnot, um, with the cheeses, we ferment them ourselves. Um, and that gives it that extra probiotic boost. Um, it's definitely a little harder to get some of the stuff here just because of the nature of the country. I mean, that's just the import laws and whatnot. Um, but there's ways around it. Uh, rather than using, um, again, something super expensive like almond milk, um, which is imported and, and hard to make yourself uh, because it creates so much waste, um, go with a, a, a cheaper option. You can make uh, cashew milk. Um, there's zero waste and it's much more affordable. Um, and there's always ways around. There's always a cheaper, better option that is available as well. So switching to a plant-based diet uh, can affect uh, your digestion. Um, it's a lot easier on the body, um, less inflammation, um, less acidic, more alkaline. Uh, and some great sources of protein that you can switch to are definitely um, any sort of nuts and seeds, um, pulses, um, grounds, um, lentils, that sort of thing. Those are all great ways to sneak in some extra protein. Trying to be a vegan chef, um, it's just going to require a lot more research, a lot more um, self-growth um, because of the lack of outside aids and tools here. Um, all you need is access to the internet. Um, there's some great vegan chefs, there's some great uh, plant-based restaurants all over the world. Um, use those as aids, use those as um, inspirations, um, and it's very easy to find any sort of recipes and whatnot now. Yeah, so for all the vegan-based, uh, plant-based restaurants out there, um, what you need to do to keep it going and to actually grow, you have to, again, you have to keep studying. You have to keep coming up with innovative, creative, um, interesting ways to make the food. Um, not only for vegans, though. You have to make the food so that it's something that anyone else would want to try. Um, and that's how you only bring about um, increasing the awareness and helping it grow um, to keep it going as well. We have um, an, a vegan bagel um, with smoked lox and cream cheese, um, which is actually just made out of carrots that we smoke in our smoker for about 10 hours. Um, and we make and uh, ferment our own cream cheese. Uh, our crispy tofu, it's like a throwback to Hong Kong street food that I grew up eating, um, completely 100% uh, vegan. And it's just crispy tofu with a lot of like flavorful sauces. Um, we do a vegan pizza. And of course, um, our dan dan noodles um, from one street over and also uh, any of our smoothie bowls for our fashion lunch. Again, it's coming up with creative ways to not only make sure that it is nutritionally dense, um, but also very flavorful, um, interesting to eat, um, and avoid the pitfalls. Um, this actually ties back to your other vegan chefs and uh, vegan restaurants. Um, try not to fall back onto the same uh, trends that people like end up using only because it's easy. Like they end up using a lot of carbs. It's very, end up being very carb heavy, starch heavy. Um, use things that are actually healthy. Try not to overly use um, sugars and whatnot. Um, stick with the natural stuff. Stick with the more clean stuff. Um, and then people will will definitely enjoy it more. Broccoli. Mushrooms. Uh, no, that's a, that's a tough one, no. I take that back. Um, I grew up eating a lot of tofu and making my own tofu as well. Uh, so if I'm making it, then tofu. If I'm not making it, then mushrooms. That's an interesting one. Neither. I actually prefer cashew milk. Only because I don't believe, first I don't believe in almond milk, there's a lot of waste. Um, and soy milk is tough, again, unless you're making it yourself. If you make it yourself, then definitely soy milk. Fresh soy milk is amazing. Just don't do the same boring stuff. Um, the problem is when people hear plant-based food or vegan food, uh, it ends up being the same boring stuff over and over again. Um, so always like keep pushing, like come up with some really fun, interesting stuff. Um, even if it doesn't work, give people options to try new things. If they keep trying, if you keep trying new things, you keep pushing the boundaries, that'll keep it interesting for people and more and more people will, will actually join and taste it. I mean, we, we generally try to not use anything with preservatives. Um, avoid things that are processed. Um, we have access to so much um, amazing local ingredients. Stick with that, you know? I mean, 
whatever local veg you can get, stick with that. There's so many amazing uh, local grains um, that no one uses anymore that are readily available that people use in the villages and whatnot. It just has to be refound, rethought of, reinvented, and used again.